Now that we have the product, quotient, power, and change of base rules for logs, let's look at some examples of how those could help us if we're going to take a derivative involving a log. So, so my first example, I've got the derivative of the natural log of some quotient. Now, uh, before I take the derivative, what I can do is just use property of, of logs. Since this is the log of a quotient, I could write this as the natural log of x plus 3 minus the natural log of x squared plus 4. So then I can just use rules that I know for logs. Remember that if you need to take the derivative of the natural log of a function, you just get the derivative of the inside over the inside. So when I go to take the derivative of this, then I just get the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x plus 3 is 1. So the derivative of the inside over the inside is that. Now the derivative of this inside is 2x. So if I take the derivative of the natural log of x squared plus 4, I get the derivative of the inside over the inside, and I'm done. Now, you can convince yourself that that was probably easier than doing it, than not applying that property of logs. If we hadn't applied that, then we would have had to do this. To take the derivative of this natural log, you would take the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of this, which is going to require the quotient rule, all over the inside, which is going to be x plus 3 over x squared plus 4. Doing it this way, we're going to have um, a fairly nasty looking complex fraction. Let's go ahead and use the quotient rule to find this derivative. We take the derivative of the top, which is 1 times the bottom. So we get 1 times x squared plus 4 minus the top, which is x plus 3 times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, all over the bottom squared. So we get x squared plus 4 squared. And then remember, this is all over x plus 3 over x squared plus 4, which if I do a little simplifying here, I've got x squared and I've got 4. If I distribute, I have minus 2x squared and minus 6x. Just distributing that 2x to each of those terms, and there's a negative sign there. So I have x squared minus 2x squared, which would be minus x squared, and then minus 6x and plus 4 on the top. And uh, then we've got x squared plus 4 squared. And that's all over x plus 3 over x squared plus 4. If I multiply top and bottom by x squared plus 4 squared, then what I'm going to get is minus x squared minus 6x plus 4. I multiply the top by x squared plus 4 squared, so this is going to cancel. If I multiply the bottom by that, I'm going to be left with x plus 3 times x squared plus 4. OK, and then I could try it to factor, but it doesn't look like that's going to work here, and reduce. So Now, these two answers look sort of different, but if I get a common denominator and combine these two to get a single fraction, then I'll get the answer that I got here. So if I multiply this top and bottom by x squared plus 4, I'd have x squared plus 4, and then minus 2x. This would need to be multiplied top and bottom by x plus 3, so that the common denominator was x plus 3 times x squared plus 4. And sure enough, we have x squared, and we have minus 2x squared is going to be negative um, x squared. And we have a minus 6x and a plus 4 all over. Yeah, so the two answers actually do match up. They're the same thing. But it was in, in terms of just getting the calculus done, by applying that quotient rule for logs first, then we could get the derivative done pretty quickly. It didn't look too bad when we did that. So we can, we can apply properties of logs to simplify first to make life easier. Ah, here's another example where applying um, properties of logs would make life easier. Now convince yourself that you would really rather not do this uh, without simplifying first. Because if you want to take the derivative of the natural log of this function, it's going to require taking the derivative of the inside over the inside, which is actually going to be pretty messy because you've got a power of 1 half. That's what the square root is. So you bring the power down and take this to 1 power less. Then you take the derivative of the inside, which is going to require the quotient rule. And so that derivative up there in the numerator is just going to be kind of a mess. So if we can avoid it, we might as well. And we can, because before we take the derivative, instead of doing this, we could have applied properties of logs. So first off, if this is to the 1 half power, then the power rule for logs says the 1 half can come down in front. So we would have 1 half 
the natural log of x squared plus 1 over x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. That's going to be much easier. Also, we could apply the quotient rule. So before we take the derivative, we have 1 half times, we have the natural log of a quotient, so we get the natural log of x squared plus 1 minus the natural log of x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. And um, this is actually much easier to do. Let's see, do I have enough parentheses here? I need to close one more. Okay, now, now taking the derivative isn't too bad. 1 half is a constant, so that comes through. And then we get um, the derivative of the natural log of x squared plus 1 would be the derivative of the inside, all over the inside, minus this derivative. The derivative of the inside would be 4x cubed minus 4x all over the inside, which is x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. So by breaking it up first, we were, able to save, we were able to save ourselves quite a bit of work in terms of taking the derivative. Now, we can also use that change of base property to do that. If you just remember that when you're taking the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of a function, you get the derivative of the inside over the inside. If you ever encounter another base, if you don't know what to do with that, you could always change it to base e. So we could change that base. We could use natural log of x squared plus 1 as long as we divide by the natural log of the old base. But another way of writing that would be as 1 over the natural log of 7 times the natural log of x squared plus 1. Now I did that because although the natural log of 7 looks complicated, it's a definite number, right? It's the exponent you put on e to get 7. That's just a constant. So it comes right through the derivative. And we get the derivative of the natural log of x squared plus 1. So we have this constant, 1 over ln 7. And then the derivative of natural log of a function is the derivative of the inside over the inside. So as we could write it all as 1, we could have 2x over the natural log of 7 times x squared plus 1. If you, the other option is just to remember if you need to take the natural log, the derivative of the log in some other base of a function, then you get the derivative of the inside over the inside, but there's an extra natural log of the base that goes in there. So you could, you can use the change of base formula and then do everything in terms of natural log, or just remember the general formula that doesn't depend on the base. It's up to you. Let me do one more that involves using the change of base. Huh. This looks so messy. I think what I'm going to do is change all of these bases. First, the log base 4 could be turned into the natural log, as long as I divide by the natural log of 4. And the log base 2 could be turned into the natural log, as long as I divide by the natural log of 2. So basically, I've converted this. This is just a 1 over natural log of 4. That's a constant, so pull it out. And you're working with the derivative of the natural log of the natural log of x over the natural log of 2. But then the rule for natural logs says if you want to take the derivative of the natural log of a function, you take the derivative of the inside. So that would be the derivative of the natural log of x over the natural log of 2 all over the inside, which is the natural log of x over the natural log of 2. Now at this point, natural log of 2 is just a constant, so I'm going to pull that out in front. So we have 1 over the natural log of 4, and then we've got this fraction. I'm pulling the 1 over natural log of 2 out, and I'm just focusing on the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x. Of course, that's all over the natural log of x over the natural log of 2. Okay, and what else do we know? natural log of 4, and the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, so up top here we just have 1 over x times the natural log of 2, and downstairs we have the natural log of x over the natural log of 2. So let me just multiply, I've got complex fraction here, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x times the natural log of 2 in order to clear out those tiny fractions. So when we do that we have 1 over the natural log of 4, and this x ln 2 cancels that, so we just get a 1 up there in the numerator. And this ln 2 cancels that, and we get x ln x down here. 
So we've got our derivative. Now, um, because 4 is 2 squared, you could use the power rule and write the natural log of 4 as 2 times the natural log of 2. Sometimes you'll see little tricks like that in the back of the book, and it will throw you off. What they've done is to use the power rule so to simplify the log so that you had the log of a simpler number instead of the log of 4.